um, I'd be tempted, uh, this, which is one reason I would bid uh, myself, I would bid three diamonds in the first place. And if it went three hearts, I would feel free to bid three spades. The, the north hand is worth 11 and, and, and opposite the takeout double. Uh, and and uh, <clears throat> I, I think uh, you have to get both suits in there. Uh, this one was uh, sort of unlucky for the offense and uh, lucky for the defense. But uh, I think it's an example of uh, twisted bidding there with Waleed and a little bit overbidding there, Vered, and uh, a little bit bidding your shortest suit instead of your longest suit, Alan. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, that being said, let's have a look at the defense here. Um, normally, as Garazzo said, if you got a sink, then lead it. Uh, I don't see any reason not to lead the Ace of Clubs, playing Ace for Mace King, or the King of Clubs if you're playing old fashioned style King for Mace King, or if you're playing what's known as Roussino leads, where the lower of touching honor is conventionally led. Um, I see no reason to lead a singleton here, because basically you're roughing with natural trump tricks that you're going to get anyway. So my choice would be to lead the Ace of Clubs. Having led the Three of Diamonds and Ellen won the Ace, she knows for sure that it's a singleton, uh, despite the false card of the King by, uh, by Verid, because there is no way the, ten would, the Three would be led from 10 doubleton, uh, from the 10-3 doubleton. So despite the fact of the, the, the King of Diamonds, um, the, the rough is going to be found. Now. Notice that Ellen returned the deuce of diamonds to give partner the rough. Okay, and that is suit preference. So, oh, partner, uh, the only possible card I've got for an entry, I prefer clubs. Now the ace of clubs by Waleed is pretty, is pretty clear. Okay, the problem is here um, is that by continuing clubs, in effect, a trick gets compressed because a rough is coming with a natural trump trick, and at the same time, a later rough sets up a diamond, and you'll, you'll notice later Varad got to pitch her losing spade on the queen of diamonds. So in effect, that compresses a trick. After the ace of clubs, and I presume, Ellen, uh, you guys are playing upside down count and attitude, so that the deuce was encouraging. Uh, is that right? Okay, thank you. So uh, Waleed now, um, he, he takes uh, this, uh, the deuce. Now, uh, let me ask you this, Ellen. Would you not also have played the deuce from a doubleton? Looking for a third round rough in the suit, would that not be part of your system? Okay, so <clears throat> here's a, thank you. Uh, here's, a, here's a thing, Waleed. Uh, can you imagine your partner, now you underled your king of clubs. And perhaps Varad would have had the queen. Partner might have had the doubleton five deuce, for instance. Okay, but this is this, of course, is a hand where basically nobody had what they said they had in the bidding. So, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, Waleed should work out that. Uh, well, gosh, I've got four trumps. Now he's got three. Declare has readed the suit. Partner doesn't have any trumps to rough with. But. Uh, uh, you could really have been giving up a trick there uh, with, uh, with by underleading the, the king of clubs. So what you needed to do if you're going to lead a club there is cash the king and then play a club to the queen. Uh, what you need to do is play the king of spades and set up your spade trick before the diamond gets set up. Because you're roughing with a natural trump trick doesn't gain a thing. If there are a way to get partner in twice, to lead diamonds twice, and this is after cashing your side suit tricks first, then you might have been able to get a rough and have a later diamond come through and promote the, the now you'd, you'd be down to two hearts, the queen ten alone, and might get a promotion. There are other positions in other hands where that is the correct thing to do, but clearly this hand is not an example of that. So you needed to cash the king of clubs and play a club to the queen. Once you did play a club to the queen at this point, okay, um, now Ellen, she's not going to return a spade into the uh, ace-jack. And uh, 
she's going to want to give you another rough because she has no idea that you're roughing with the natural trump trick that you're going to get anyway. Rather than coming a club and at least beating it too. So by coming a diamond at this point, um, here's where you made a little mistake, Varid. Uh, you could have now, because of their, the defensive error, you could have held this to down one by tossing your nine of clubs on this loser. Okay, this is like a loser on loser play, as Walid has to rough with a natural trump trick, and you get to throw away your club loser because the defense did not cash three clubs before coming the diamond. Okay, and if they had done that, then to cash three clubs and then come a diamond, now you pitch your speed loser as they were rough with the natural trump trick. So this is why it was important for the defense to come the king of spades earlier. Get rid of that entry to the queen of diamonds and dummy. Okay, does anybody have any questions on this one? There were a lot of, a lot of the basics, I think, violated on this hand. The initial takeout double, bidding a shorter suit instead of an A6 suit, rebidding uh, uh, the opening suit with minimum values. Uh, now there is a case, let me just before we go on one second, there is a case where it is correct to rebid um, hearts with Varid's hand at the three level. And uh, that is, for instance, an auction that goes um, one heart, double, two hearts, pass. Now a pass allows the initial takeout doubler to double again or to compete again. Uh, many players play a treatment called one, two, three, stop. It, where a hand like Varid's, in other words, very similar to a weak two bid, uh, can rebid but once uh, and bid uh, three hearts just to preempt the, the takeout doubler from competing again. Uh, even if you're down one, and even down one double, minus 50 or minus 100, you're getting a better score than the uh, two spades or three of a minor that is uh, normally available in the other direction. But once Ellen came in with two, two, three stopping, the three heart bid is competitive, showing extra values. Um, so um, you don't have that available. Um, I see a comment there by... by uh, Uh, dot, let me see, your rule of thumb, when you have length in trumps and you hope to become, yes, exactly. Uh, usually in, in a situation like that, you are um, defensively trying to get declarer to sh short rough them, in other words, to force them. You can agree, uh, ju uh, Juice, that uh, three hearts can be weak. Uh, but Pass says I'm weak. Pass says I have a minimum opener. And to bid three hearts says, I have extras. And uh, that way, if the two spade, two heart uh, bidder has the top of their range, uh, remember the two heart bid is basically in a five to nine range. So when they're up there, they're in that uh, a good seven or eight, that sort of range. And, uh, and the opener has bid three hearts with, a little, with extras. And the opponents now compete to three spades. The two heart raiser can double three spades. Partner has extras, I have extras, they're too high at the three level, let's go for the throat. So uh, three hearts can be weak in the one, two, three stop when there is no two spade. Uh, yeah, so there are several game trials, but we aren't trying for game. That's why we've got extra values with a game try, not when we're competing at the three that just want to compete. And we either going to drive them to the three level where they're going to go down or we're trying to bid three hearts to make. So this does not apply in this situation. So-called exception to uh, uh, Cohen's the law. Okay, next hand.
Okay, uh, here we are uh, almost in the same place. Uh, after pass one spade, uh, my recommendation is a pass with your hand, Susan. You have a hand defensively oriented. Granted, you have the high card points for an overcall, but your suit is not quite good enough and or long enough, and you have too much defense in spades. So uh, I would recommend and pass. Had you passed, the auction would probably go pass one spade, pass, pass. Now, Verd could balance with a, uh, with a, a double as a passed hand, and sometimes uh, a player with a, like Waleed's hand will now rebid two spades, and you can take a piece of their action. And this might be uh, 200 or possibly even 500. Uh, it looks like there's no entry to dummy unless they rough a diamond to dummy and lead the queen of clubs and losing to the stiff king. But likely they're going to lay down the ace somewhere in there and drop it. But uh, you're probably going to get 200 uh, defending uh, two spades doubled. Um, <clears throat> having bid two diamonds, I really like Vered's uh, bid of two spades. As a past hand, her hand is now worth really 12, 12 and a half. It's virtually an opening hand. The opposite partner's overcall, and the overcall says, I've got 10 to 17 partner and a decent suit. So uh, the, the hand is really too good just to raise two diamonds to three diamonds. Now, after two spades, uh, this is kind of uh, interesting from what Susan should do here. Um, the two spade bid could be made on slightly different types of hands, like expecting six diamonds perhaps for the overcall to the king. Um, there it could really be thinking, well, we've got an easy six diamonds in no trump. I've got the king queen of hearts. And Verid might have a hand for the two spade bidder where she, say, didn't have the queen of hearts but had something, some club stuff. So she might have uh, the king or the ace of clubs in slightly different hand and be fishing for exactly the no trump bid. But with, uh, with your hand, uh, your partner's two spade bid, uh, I would not be. Uh, I would it's very close whether to bid two no trump or just to say ah, I've got nothing more to say partner and bid three diamonds as we aren't sure about the value of the king of clubs uh, I don't mind two no trump uh, it, it could work out but uh, I'm not a big fan of the two diamond overcall in the first place never having bid two no trump uh, very I think four diamonds uh, uh, is a little bit much by uh, first uh, Q bidding two spades and now bidding three diamonds, uh, letting partner know one of the reasons your reason for bidding uh, uh, two spades was a great diamond fit, and you aren't really that interested in three no, or you would raise two no to three no, or perhaps pass two no in other, in other cases. I think three diamonds is enough rather than uh, pushing, for the, uh, pushing for the diamond game. Having bid four diamonds, uh, with your hand, Susan, I think I'd pass four diamonds. Uh, uh, move the king of clubs into the diamond suit? Uh, uh, well, that's the story. Then, of course, you're going to go on. But you have too, much, uh, too many values in spades. This is a defensively oriented hand, not an offensively oriented hand. So uh, my style is uh, the, so many people nowadays uh, play the bid more system. And there is a tendency now for people to bid, to overbid, and to re rebid uh, without, uh, without much consideration for what I was uh, brought up on the basics of bid. Okay? Uh, I don't mind that style because uh, when I'm playing, if I'm playing with a regular partner, we love our card. We love to penalize. We love to defend. So uh, our attitude is uh, let them bid. But I think there's uh, uh, too much poker in the game these days and not enough uh, judgment and partnership trust uh, in auctions. Okay, uh, let's uh, do another one here. AO members. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Most most of them aren't anonymous. That's funny. I wonder if they have a 12-step program.
Oh, hi, Simone. Welcome. You there, Juiced? Ah, okay.
Okay, kind of an interesting hand. As a matter of fact, this is uh, this is a, an overbidder's delight. This hand, I totally agree with uh, Juice Pass of uh, one no Trump, but uh, a lot of players would uh, take a bid, which I disagree with uh, vehemently. The, the the thing is on this hand, four spades looks cold east west vulnerable game, and uh, quietly down two and no Trump for minus a hundred. So. Uh, the one no trump bid certainly did act as a preempt. Uh, when one no trump comes around to your hand, Sylvia, uh, many players would balance uh, with uh, a bid that showed the majors, despite the four full shape. Uh, this is a matter of, uh, of partnership agreement and sell whether you're going to do it with uh, with this type of distribution. But uh, uh, a lot of players would compete and show the majors, in which case East might very well. They certainly buy the hand in spades. Whether they get to game, they might very well and they might not. Um, <clears throat> having uh, having uh, sold out, as it were, to one no Trump, uh, there's really not too much the uh, uh, you can do uh, in that hand as declarer. Um, everything went pretty much according to plan. Juice made a couple of good plays there. Uh, one was uh, exiting the nine of clubs. Uh, when he was in uh, after cashing the last spade. And uh, just to be safe, giving the Claire what they've got caught anyway, what they've got anyway. And the second good play was uh, dumping the Queen of Hearts uh, underneath the ace. Uh, obviously, at this stage, uh, the Claire has shown up with their, their high card points. They can't possibly have King of Hearts. And if they did, it was coming down under the Queen anyway. Uh, this allows the king to be won in Sylvia's hand, of course, so that uh, Ju uh, Juice can score the last two tricks uh, with the diamond suit. Uh, the only thing, I have a question here. Um, have have East-West, uh, Sylvia, did you guys agree on your defensive carding? Uh, Juice says no. Okay, I was just wondering, because if you're obviously if you're playing just uh, normal... Um, say upside down uh, counter attitude. The the first pitch by uh, Sylvia was the six of hearts, which should be encouraging in hearts. So at that point, this is where uh, Juice carefully uh, tossed, uh, exited the nine of clubs. Uh, the queen of hearts also would have led to down two, but that's kind of a tough play to make unless you know partner has something in hearts by virtue of the uh, of the discard. So uh, with no agreements, whether standard or upside down uh, uh, attitude. Or Labbitt's uh, juice just made what's known as a bridge play by exiting the nine of clubs, and that was the correct thing to do. Fairly straightforward hand in a lot of ways. Okay, let's have another.
Uh, yes, Juice, you are a full-fledged member. As a matter of fact, I might even uh, nominate you for the executive. Bowser's, would the Inspector Gadget say, uh, that almost made and could have, and at one point should have, but it also should have been down too. Uh, <laughs> interesting result. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's examine the bidding here. Uh, it is not my open uh, one spade with a hand like that, especially in first seat vulnerable. Uh, third seat's another matter, depending on the condition, but uh, I'm a firm believer in having uh, two defensive tricks to open the bidding. And that's a hand with one slow defensive trick in diamonds and another half defensive trick in spades. And uh, there's no reason not to open it a week two spades. The texture of the spade suit is excellent with the Jack 10 9 8. It's near the top of the range for a week two bid and it does not have the, the, uh, the necessary uh, qualifications for a one bid. So I would open it two spades, and uh, whatever happens, happens. Probably what would happen is it would go pass, pass, pass. And that would make two spades, and you get a nice plus on the hand. Having opened it one spade, uh, three hearts is a pretty gutsy bid, Simone, but you do have texture in your, in your suit, and you do have a seven-bagger and an outside sif. Uh, I've seen players make bids like this with seven triple two distribution, what's known as the depth distribution. Uh, if you're going to stretch on three, on pre three bids, uh, folks, don't do it with seven triple two, to two hands. Uh, make sure you have at least a singleton in one of the side suits. Having bid uh, three hearts, uh, Sylvia had, uh, uh, had her, well, having heard that, has got to make a choice. Do I negative double on this hand? Or do I pass and let partner balance with a presumed double and go for the throat uh, against three hearts? And uh, this is partly a matter of style, but, uh, you know, despite the misfit uh, with the spade suit, obviously if partner's opened a, a spade opener and has a side four-card suit and a minor, 
we, we could even belong in a game in a minor when there's been a three heart bid on my right and I've got four of them. There's only two left. So they might be 1-1 one, one or 2-0 or 0-2, we don't know. And if partner happened to have a shape like a 5-2-3-3 three, three, uh, three hand, uh, a negative double might not work out very good for us. On the other hand, uh, passing and uh, defending three hearts seems pretty attractive. Uh, looking uh, at an ace and a king and two what looked to be like two natural defense trump tricks. What would I do in this situation? Um, I confess I would pass in tempo. And if partner balanced with a double, uh, I would sit for it. Uh, it's just a, a matter of uh, what I call FTF, follow that feeling, as to which way you're going to, to go in a situation where it's pretty well a flip of the coin which you might choose. Okay, having chosen the negative double, uh, oh boy, Juice, you're absolutely right, OA Anonymous. Um, four spades is way too much. Uh, I would bite the bullet and bid three spades and, uh, and see what happened. Uh, I bid four spades uh, in that south, uh, you know, a grand partner has a, um, a three heart preempt, but uh, where are these people going? Uh, it's close whether to double or not, but uh, you were planning to finesse the spade queen? Ah, yeah. Even if you did have a trump and dummy, that wouldn't have helped much. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. A partner, I would play partner for a full opener as well, New. And like, like I said, uh, it's just a matter of, of follow that feeling. There's no right or wrong as to whether you choose to pass and uh, go for a defense or whether you choose to negative double. The problem with negative doubling is it needs her to have a side four card suit. And for partner to bid it, you know partner is not going to sit for the double and is obviously not going to be bidding uh, three no trump. You're the one with the heart stoppers. So the likely scenario after the doubles that partner is going to rebid their spades, and uh, which is not exactly something we want with a spade fit. So uh, my choice would be to lean toward going for penalties, and uh, I would pass in tempo. Partner has a full opening bid with shortage in hearts, and partner balances with a double, which is the likeliest thing. I'm happy. So uh, uh, <coughs> having uh, the bid for spades there, I don't. I would. I, despite the best spots, I think the sixth spade uh, is a big help. And uh, if there's any card missing, uh, you know, in, in diamonds, partner rates to have it. But uh, King of Hearts is kind of a nice card. You don't expect, uh, you're kind of expecting either two heart tricks or a heart and a heart rough. So, uh, I would double four spades and hope we beat it at uh, hope we beat it two, but would be thinking maybe we're only going to beat it one. Uh, okay, on the uh, on the defense, virtually anything but a trump lead, which would help out uh, Juiced, uh, should beat it two tricks. Now, uh, uh, Simone chose the Ace of Hearts, which why not uh, on this auction, and now continued Hearts. Now, you notice she continued the five of hearts, her lowest one, to suggest something in clubs, the only other place where she's got something that might be helpful uh, to partner. Let's say uh, in case partner had the ace jack instead of the ace empty, he can wait for two club tricks. But uh, after it went a heart to the uh, queen, okay, um, in, in the uh, uh, south hand there, uh, Cream, uh, by playing the uh, playing the deuce of uh, the deuce of spades, you know your partner has uh, seven hearts for the three heart bid, so you know you're going to get over roughed. So put the six of spades in there and force uh, the eight out of partner, or sorry, out of uh, out of declarer. Okay, then your seven can grow up later in the hand. Okay, so this costs a trick. Having now uh, gotten that over roughed, uh, this should now be down only one. The king spades now goes to the ace, 
which is fine. And uh, now, pretty well, all you can do is, uh, you know, exits. You can, well, you can, any card is going to beat it one. But uh, so the seven of diamonds, I think, as I recall, is what you, uh, what makes it there, the top of, uh, and declare won the king. Now, when you exited the diamond, your partner played their lowest diamond. Like, were you playing standard carding, I believe? So partner, if partner had the queen of diamonds, uh, might have played a higher card, but partner's uh, diamond was totally discouraging there. Having won the uh, king of diamonds uh, at this point, I think... Uh, Oh, I see. I, I could think. Too. Let me see. So this has gone uh, diamond. Oh, I understand now. If you, uh, I think what you needed to do. Uh, yes, Susan, I would double four spades and expect to beat it one and hope to beat it two. Uh, I think on the diamond you needed to play the ten of diamonds, juice and dummy in order to lead the jack of hearts. In effect, that becomes a trump for you. So now you can either pitch a loser or over rough again. I, I think that's the case for uh, for uh, at, at that stage is what should have been done. When uh, when Takreem won the next uh, spade and now continued the deuce of diamonds, uh, you won the queen. I think the hand is uh, I think the hand can be made now. And uh, you played the jack. Yeah, you just needed to draw a trump, but you threw away the jack of hearts, the dummy, and that was the winner. Otherwise, the hand was uh, cold at that stage. Uh, Mace, I, <laughs> you're talking about the stuff you spray in the face of a bear? Uh, no, you threw away the jack of hearts. And uh, if you just drew Trump there and kept the jack of hearts, you had three good diamond tricks. The two extra diamonds throw away two of your clubs, and the jack of hearts throws away your third club. You don't ditch a club at all. You get all three of them ditched. You do not always lose three aces in the queen of spades. They forgot to cash. When uh, Treen came another diamond, instead of cashing the ace of clubs, you were cold. You threw away a winner with a hard jack. Okay. A small bit of brain flatulence there, uh, to which we have all been uh, have succumbed at one time or another. Okay, next hand. Oh, there's an interesting question on the last, uh, what can East-West make in no Trump? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, what is going to be led against uh, against a three no Trump, uh, the king of hearts? I think you're only, if you're going to play no Trump, the only place it's going to be played from is from the east side. I don't know how you're going to get there, really. The king of hearts is going to get led. And then you're going to look at that dummy and uh, what are we doing? So uh, what can you take? Seven, eight. You're going to need the diamonds as entries to the spade. So double dummy, I guess you'd uh, win the return uh, and just knock out a spade and win a return, knock out another spade. 
And with the Queen of Clubs in the lock, I think the three no trump might be made. I don't know how to bid it. It's very seldom right to be a bidding and playing a no trump with a void and partner's main suit. Many times it, it works with a singleton, but uh, with no communication and with a void, it's uh, not exactly a percentage way to go. Well, hi to the two bills.
somebody accept? Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at this one. This hand is a clear pass. It's the kind of hand where you might be able to come in, depending on the auction, come in later with an unusual no trump on some auctions. Uh, this isn't one of them. After a one club, um, a vulnerable overall versus not after opposite a passed hand uh, is, uh, is dangerous with a bad suit. Um, granted, an overcall uh, goes from 7 to 17 points. And this hand has nine. The king of clubs rates to be working on the auction. And the ten and eight of hearts are kind of decent intermediates. But this, this is an absolute minimum overcall. Uh, I don't mind it uh, not vulnerable. It's, I'm just saying it's dangerous uh, uh, being vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> having bid one spade, uh, Simone's hand is a little tough to bid here. Um, my choice would probably be to uh, to pass, uh, or sorry, um, um, my choice would probably be to a negative double on this hand. I don't feel there's uh, quite enough to bid two hearts freely. Uh, for partnerships that pay a, a bid at the two level here as 10 plus, two hearts is fine, uh, a, la, a la standard American yellow card. Um, my uh, my style on, on a free bid at the two level is to have a little better hand, in other words, virtually an opener, uh, the two over one strength. Otherwise, I would handle a hand like that, either with a native double or a pass and wait for a balance. That's, uh, that's just my style. Not everybody agrees with it, but fine and dandy. Um, having bid two hearts, Bill's, uh, Bill's three hearts is automatic. And now we've got come down to the crux of this hand. With a bad heart suit, and bearing in mind that Bill might have raised to three hearts on a three-card suit, um, he uh, exactly, uh, they do play free bids. Uh, many, like I, I mentioned, Bill, many uh, two-over-one experts do play the free bid here as from 10 plus. And uh, once there's interference, two hearts is fine. Okay, not my style. If you want to play it as 10 plus, go ahead partner must understand that, uh, you know, that that can be your minimum holding. Um, my style is not to do this, and if I were to do it, I would have a better suit than, than Queen Empty Fifth. But fine and dandy, this is a bidder's game, let's face it. And uh, here, it certainly worked out, but it needn't have. Okay, now after three hearts, um, having opened a club and with bad hearts, uh, my choice would be three no trump. Uh, that would give partner in effect a choice of games. If partner were a little more unbalanced, partner would choose to get away with four hearts or something. And partner can choose four hearts. But with balanced hand like Bill has, he might choose to pass three no trump. Uh, and three no trump is uh, plays rather easily. Now, what happens to four hearts? The opening lead of the three of of, uh, of the three of spades. You have to look at this Betty and you say, well, either partner has led from something like uh, uh, queen third or possibly king third, and doesn't have the ace of clubs, or partner has led a singleton. Um, looking at your hand over here. I really don't see any way to beat the hand unless it is a singleton. If partner is led from, from king third of spades and has not bid two spades over two hearts, all they would need would be that king third or king third and one outside card. Um, I would choose to believe that's a, that's a three. And yeah, if you return spade, what spade would you return, Betty? Can you tell me? Uh, low for clubs is correct. Uh, specifically right is the deuce. And the deuce partner gets the rough and trust partner's suit preference signal for the rough and underleads the ace of clubs to partner king for the setting trick on a second rough. 
of the spade suit. And that beats four hearts when three no trump was iced tea. Okay? So that's a fairly straightforward hand. We can just uh, get on to the next one if there are no, no questions here. Thanks, Babs. Well, undo is freely allowed if we can undo them. Ah, good. Thanks, Bab.
Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> pretty darn good auction. I actually approve of all of it. Um, <clears throat> And I'm a believer now, after the overcall, uh, the one heart overcall, now, and the one level overcall has a big range. It has from 7 to 17, a 10 point range. The median point of that is 12, a minimum opening bid. So, as an advancer in Betty's hand, um, <clears throat> as an advancer in Betty's hand, um, it, uh, uh, it is best just to in your mind, say, partner has a minimum winning bid of 12, and to bid your hand just normally, as if that is how the auction had gone, one heart partner and first seed had bid one heart, passed to you. In which case, one no trump by uh, Betty's hand is banging on. And if partner has a, a, an overcall that's uh, in the minimum range, in the 7 to 12, an ugly 13 or something, or 14, they aren't going to take much action after your bid. But if they have an upper range, they are going to take some action. Okay? So uh, in, in either case, just bidding naturally after an overcall is, is the way to approach it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> Dot says you would never freely bid no trump without a stopper in the opponent's suit. Well, when you've got 10 9 fourth and it's a cl one club opening bid and at your one level, that's enough of a stopper. All it needs is like the jack in partner's hand, even singleton, and you've got a stopper. Okay? Um, this is just the same as opening one no trump and you're too small in a side suit. You would obviously freely open one no trump without a stopper. Okay? You don't know whether it's the opponent's suit or not, but, uh, you know, uh, if you don't bid one no trump ever without a stopper in the opponent's suit, you're at a big disadvantage in this game. So one no trump is uh, one no trump is uh, is the correct bid here. Two club overcall. Bill caught himself. Now he's almost got enough to double and then bid bid his heart suit. Not quite. He would need like 18 or more to do that. But uh, take that jack spades and throw it away, and uh, give him king in either one of the minors. And that would be a hand worth first doubling and then bidding hearts. Okay? Uh, having bid on this one, three hearts is, is virtually automatic on his hand, and of course Betty's got a clear-cut pass. Okay? Uh, that's fine, Dot, and if that's at the one level, that's fine. And if that doesn't stop you, that's fine. You know, uh, feel free, and uh, I'm happy to play uh, play you for rubber bridge for money, whatever you like. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, let us get uh, get back to this hand on the uh, on the defense, etc. Is automatic now. Having won the jack and basically shown your hand, Simone, as Ace King Queen Jack, when you're going to cash your next club, you have a choice of three of them that you know are going to win the trick, and partner will know as well. Uh, so the card you play is this is a suit preference situation. So by not playing the queen of clubs, you would be suggesting to her partner, uh, partner is getting in, that you have a card in the diamond suit. Partner doesn't know whether you've got diamond strength here or spade strength. For all partner knows, you have the king of spades. And when partner gets in, switching to a spade to your king declares ace would basically set up queen ten in Bill's hand, uh, sitting over declares alleged ace jack or ace jack third. So I think it is correct a trick two to now play the queen of clubs and suggest the diamond card for partner if partner is going to get in. Okay. Uh, say uh, say on this one after uh, here you have now uh, you've now cashed the king of the ace of clubs. You're suggesting a spade card and the king of clubs. You're suggesting a spade card. Okay. Uh, if you were in a suit preference situation, uh, expert partnerships in a situation like this where you have the ace, king, and queen, if they had no preference between the two, let's say your hand, you didn't have the queen of hearts, and let's say you had the king third of diamonds and the king third of spades, then at trick two you would play the king of clubs, your middle one. You know, partner, I've got equal choice between those other two suits. Do whatever you think is right. So uh, experts watch those cards very carefully because they'd be quite helpful on defense. 
Okay. Uh, have played the uh, the uh, King of Clubs. Okay. Uh, uh, now here you rough Bill with the Jack. You want to send the boy to do a mass job. Now the opponent's distribution in the heart is a little unlucky. You would hope they'd be a uh, three-two. Might be queen third offside, and you're always going to lose one trick in the suit. As soon as the Jack of Hearts held, you knew the the uh, Queen of Hearts was on side when it didn't get over roughed. Okay. Now at this point. You need to, uh, you should, I think, uh, place a place of trumps. Uh, it didn't hurt. I think you chose to, took the diamond, uh, to take the diamond hook at that stage. Uh, but when you roughed the queen of clubs with the ten of hearts, now you're going down. I know, you, uh, I, I know it seemed like that was the right thing to do, and on most hands it would have been. So this, I'm just speaking as a result merchant here. I, too, would have roughed with the ten. And because of the 4-1 distribution, the 9-8 uh, are going to get promoted, and you're going down. You needed to rough, believe it or not, with the 4. And with the 9-8-7-3 on your, your left, they'd have to over rough with one of the, the higher spots. And now your ace-king-10 would bring down the rest of them. So I think you made the right play, and I think you were just darn unlucky on the hand. Okay. That's about all. I don't really have much more to say about that hand. I think there were just a couple of a couple of little points I wanted to make there. Okay, let's uh, get another group in here.
kind, kind of an interesting hand in the bidding. Um, club of spade, negative double, two spades, I think, are automatic. And uh, let's take a look at Didi's hand here. Um, the, the way I value a hand, um, I call this hand, we've got uh, 15 high card points. However, uh, I count a half a point for each ace, which makes it 16, and two more for that single open ace, which makes the hand worth 18. And partner's negative double is promising at least enough for a normal response, so 6 plus. And 18 and 6 is 24. And uh, I confess I would just bid four hearts. And I, I want to be in a vulnerable game that's at least, uh, for, you know, that's at least 40% uh, to make. I like the 10-9 of clubs as texture. Um, I like the roughing value in spades uh, and uh, the diamond control, obviously. So, uh, so I would uh, take a, I would take a bid. Um, having the stiff ace of spades with the opponents bidding spades, you know that. Uh, their high card values, at least five or six points of them, are in the spade suit, uh, which increases the uh, percentage that partner, in addition to the hearts, uh, probably has a working minor suit card, ace or king of clubs and or queen of diamonds. So I would take the pump and bid, uh, and bid four hearts there, D. Um, after having bid three hearts, being in the minimum range with the south hand, uh, the, the Johnny of diamonds is basically pointless. The King's Wonderful King of Clubs is a great card when partners open the club. When opponents have bid and raised spades and we're holding four spades, we know partner is marked with a singleton spade. Okay, and so, um, but partner also knows that and has chosen to freely bid three hearts and not four. So being in that minimum range of the negative double of that kind of six to nine range, I would do exactly that and pass three hearts. I believe game should bid here. Um, <clears throat> as far as the uh, as far as the opening lead is concerned, uh, Walid uh, Garazzo says if you got a stiff lead, it uh, even it happens to be in uh, in declarer's suit. But you don't have a stiff. You've got a double tenace. So I don't see any reason not to lead the king of spades. That's just a natural opening lead. It turns out it doesn't matter. You can lead the kitchen sink in the hand is always uh, cold for a game. Okay. Uh, not really much more I want to say about this hand. Uh, so let's, uh, if there aren't any questions, let's uh, skip to the next.
Okay, sorry folks, I was uh, distracted by uh, three different private conversations. Uh, hang on just a moment while I finish uh, one of them. Um, okay, so I'm back. I'm sorry about the distractions, folks. Three different private messages. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Two spades is an auto opening, and uh, check, check, check. Uh, some might balance with two no trump with the south end. It's close. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. But uh, with some defense to spades, uh, good haste for just passing and, uh, and just try to take a plus on the hand. I would call that another FTF hand. Uh, if you did balance with two no trump, then D's hand in the north is, uh, is it would be almost impossible to pass, I think. And with the doubleton jack nine, I think a raise to three no trump would be clear. And it looks like three no trump will make rather easily on this hand. Uh, even with the queen of hearts lead, the ten of hearts uh, uh, prevents uh, anything ugly happening in that, that suit. So uh, what do you do? You run off on a diamond lead. Uh, five, seven, eight. Well, a diamond just might put it to a three no trump because you're going to need a spade trick on the hand. Okay, anyway, uh, two spades, uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, there wasn't much to the play or the defense at all, and uh, I just as soon uh, not get into much of that. I think everything was pretty pretty straightforward all the way through. Uh, opening lead of the ace of clubs and, and continuation and forcing declare later, and there's really nothing that could go wrong in the end. Uh, L, I might, uh, I don't know, I might uh, play a couple rounds of aids early. Uh, there was the danger of, of a, of a diamond off. When you led, I think, the diamonds or something, the eight, uh, you basically told the declarer what the dagger told South what the diamond holding was. Let's say he did not have natural trumpets. He might have been able to work out to win the ace of diamonds and continue the suit, get the rough. Okay. All right, let's do another. <laughs> Good bats.
Uh, okay, that's a good question. Let me uh, interject here, okay? Um, playing two over one, of course, a bid of two hearts is still a game force and just shows uh, five or more spades and four or more hearts and could be any strength up to the moon, so there's no need to jump. Now, I personally, and in my, uh, in my um, teachings in our, our WOB sessions, uh, play this bit as specifically what, what we call a picture jump. Since it's not needed uh, to jump to show extra values, like what would be a normal jump shift, um, like uh, say it went one spade, one no trump, jump to three hearts to show a really good 18 or 19 and force to gain. That's not necessary playing a two over one system. So I like the three heart bid as what's known as a pitch jump. Show at least five five in the two suits with all the high card points held in those two suits. So there might be a straight jack outside, but no more, no queen or better, none of the top three honors. Um, you uh, uh, can and uh, you know and and you you've not agreed on that. So without having an agreement about a specific rebid like that, um, I would make the assumption, uh, playing with a new partner like you're doing, is that it shows a strong jump shift. In other words, a juicy 18 or more. In other words, uh, inherent uh, slam try. You know, so a G partner, uh, you know, you've two over one here. We're going at least a game. But I've got much more than is necessary for a game, and I'm interested interested in a slam. I've got 18 or 19 or even more, maybe 20 or something, and an unbalanced hand that I couldn't open two clubs. So without discussion, I would play it like that. Okie doke. But, you know, the, I appreciate you saying something here at the table rather than uh, dropping back five and punting uh, Canadian football. You know, uh, here we allow table talk, we allow undoes. The purpose is to learn and to have some fun. So not to worry about that. The results are irrelevant. So I appreciate you speaking up. Well, uh, now, <laughs> now, D, um, that's pretty well. That's pretty well what you should be thinking. But um, you're kind of in what what I call an SOTP auction, which is eat of the pants. Exactly. What this, this would tend to do to be a qubit agreeing hearts.
Okay, much better. We got the train back on the rails. Do you want to ask about this, D? Are you curious about that? Oh, very good. You're absolutely right. It is. It says, partner, do you have the queen of Trump? So there are two things you do. One thing you do is you say, uh, if you don't, obviously, you sign off in five spades. If you do, and you do not have an outside unbid king, then you just jump to six spades. If you do, and you have an outside king that you haven't told partner about, you bid that king. That gives two messages to partner. Exactly right, Dee. Well done. Sometimes that particular bit of information is enough to let partner place the hand in no trump, either at the six or seven level. <laughs> okay, um, we aren't going to play this hand, okay? So just go ahead, Waleed, and uh, pick the closest card to your thumb. And, uh, <clears throat> and the play is going to be irrelevant, but the bidding is not irrelevant. So we'll talk quickly about that. 
So D, just make a claim or something. It doesn't matter if you claim making all the tricks or down all the tricks. We don't care about the result, just uh, make a claim. Okay, so everybody can see the hand in the, uh, in the result window. Okay, now <clears throat> we'll discuss the auction as it actually happened. Um, after three spades, three spades sets the trump suit. Okay, now we're going to assume that the three hard bid is the extra values, which is what you did and what you have. Okay, it's, it's unnecessary in a two over one auction, but uh, let's, we're going to continue on the basis of that um, partnership agreement, let's say. So therefore, Ken knows that you have a great hand over there of a really good 18 or more with slam interest. Okay, now in either case, um, the trump suit has been set the moment he bids three spades. Now at this point, you bid four hearts and put that alert that as a Q bid. It is, but what it does along the way is it denies a control in any of the suit's lower ranking. The correct bid over three spades, not playing conventional stuff, is four clubs, not four hearts. When you are control bidding below the level of game in your agreed trump suit in a two over one auction that is being forced to game, the control bid may be a first or a second round control. It can be an ace or a void or be a king or a singleton. In this case, D, you have a singleton club. And the other reason for approaching uh, control bidding in this fashion is that Here's the thing. When partner bids three spades, you can't bid Blackwood, for instance, willy-nilly, for no trump, because you have no control in diamonds. The Blackwood response will say how many uh, key cards partner has, but not where they are. And sometimes the opponents in that uh, uncontrolled suit are able to cash two tricks. So uh, it has to be control bid by one of the partners before you can use Blackwood. Well, Blackwood is a convention used to stay out of slams when there are not the um, needed controls for the partnership to bid a slam. It's not a convention for getting into slams, it's a convention for staying out of them. So <clears throat> here, over four clubs, what you really want to hear is a four diamond control bid from your partner. And four clubs not only shows partner that control bid in clubs, he doesn't know if it's the, he knows it's not the ace with his hand, obviously, but he doesn't know if it's a void, a king, or a singleton. He has no idea. He just knows you have a club control. In a way, he doesn't care what it is because he knows now there are no club losers in the hand, regardless what your bid is, uh, what your holding in clubs is. So he now bids four diamonds, which is just what you want to hear. Now you could control bid four hearts, or you could, once you've heard four diamonds, you could blackberry yourself. For no trump, partner bids five hearts. Now you know partner is the ace of clubs and the ace of diamonds. All right, five, five no trump. Specific, we have all the controls, partner. Any specific kings, he would bid six diamonds. I have the king of diamonds. And now the bid that you would make over six diamonds is six hearts. That is what's known as a last train to Clarksville bid. Partner, if you have a third round control in hearts, the queen or a doubleton, bid a grand slam, otherwise sign off in six spades. Okay? Now, notice on this hand, uh, if, uh, if uh, three, now the, the spade break, I mean, it's a bookum dano, as we say, the old Hawaii 5-0, unlucky. But spades will normally break 3-2. And if they were to break 3-2, let's just count the, the winners here. You'd have five spades, two hearts is seven, Four diamonds is 11, and the ace of puppy tracks is 12. So the contract to find a 13th trick, uh, one way would be to draw two rounds of trumps. And if they split 3-2, there'd be one trump out. If the doubleton happened to have been the jack, 
you can safely rough a low heart. If it weren't the jack, you would have to chance roughing a low heart and hope that, that it didn't get over roughed with the jack, that somebody else had a doubleton heart over that. That's a better chance, a better percentage chance than the club finesse. Okay, which should be needed. So in other words, this is not really a hand where you want to be bidding a grand on. Uh, six spades is the safest place to play. But uh, there's, bridding the grand is not a bad place. I mean, imagine that queen of clubs were the queen of hearts. And as it were, there is a doubleton heart, and a third round heart rough will un with a normal spade break, which will make the grand. It's not a terrible grand to be in. Okay, that's how it should be bid. Okay, on this given auction, um, after the uh, six heart bid, I've got the king of hearts and the ace of hearts. Um, it's really tough with Ken's hand uh, on, the, on the south hand on this auction not to bid seven spades. Very interesting hand, Bab. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Um, playing a normal two over one auction, by the way, let me just get into that. The auction would go one spade, two clubs, two hearts. Okay, now there are numerous ways it can go. We forced a game. South can now just bid two spades, leaving the partnership all kinds of room to do stuff. Um, also, um, after two spades, for instance, now uh, North might just bid... Uh, uh, I'll get to that in a moment, BJ, M might just bid three spades, which if the partnership is playing what's known as either a serious or a frivolous 3 no trump, either partner uh, in a hand where a trump suit has been agreed and, um, and in a game-forcing auction, either partner may express either partial slam interest or serious slam interest with a three no trump bid because the partnership makes the agreement that we don't want to play in three no trump. We've agreed on a suit. So three no trump is not a possible place for us to play. Therefore, we can use that bid in a conventional sense to express different types of slam interest. Uh, that is something that a lot of partnerships, uh, advanced partnerships and that use uh, commonly nowadays. Uh, so there are different ways it can go. Just so you know, though, D, is uh, playing a two-over-one system, you don't need to jump around in the auction to show extra strength because you're already in a game-forcing auction. So you can use these bids in a more practical sense to show other hand types that you might, uh, might otherwise not be able to show. Um, okay, uh, one other thing. Uh, BJ had a player, what, uh, had a question, what is the five-heart bid? Uh, they've agreed spades as trumps, um, BJ. So a after the response to 4 no trump showing uh, 0 or 3, and clearly it's three key cards here, the five heart bid says, do you have the queen of spades? Because when you're playing key card Blackwood, the only way to show the queen or deny it is when you have two key cards. So therefore, when you have any other amount of keys, there has to be a bid available to ask for the queen should the other partner be interested in locating it. So that five heart bid here said, do you have the queen of, of spades partner? And the bid of six hearts says, yes, I do, and I also have the king of hearts. If instead D had the king of clubs, she would bid over five hearts, she would bid six, six clubs. Yes, I do, clubs. Now, Ken would say, oh, her earlier uh, club cue bid, for instance, had she made it, was based on a control which was the king. It might be king singleton, it might be king doubleton, it might be king third. He doesn't know. But he does know that it's the king, and therefore there are three club tricks available. Okay? So um, let us quickly go uh, one more hand. I don't mind going a couple minutes over if that should happen. So let's do one more hand and see if we're fairly swift on it. A lot to discuss in that last one.
Yeah, there was a uh, Kib comment on the last hand, by the way, that the seven spades was not doubled. This was a good thing. Uh, Ellen was looking at Jack Nine Eight Fifth of Spades. Uh, these are the kind of hands, the, the situations where you're happy there in Spades Seven Spades. You know it's going down, but you don't want to double them and have them run to Seven No Trump, which might be making. So take your plus, and so you could gain an extra fifty points by doubling them. Who cares? You'd be risking thousands of points by by doubling in order to gain fifty. Silly odds. So it was a good pass of seven spades by Ellen on the last hand. All right, <laughs> we'll have a quick look at this one. This is the kind of hand where when I'm playing match points at the club, the opponents always somehow get to three no trump and I get to scrape all the egg off my face with my doubled and king of diamonds in the lock and they take six diamond tricks and a club and three spades and maybe even a heart. And uh, I, sc I scrape the egg off my face on a 12 top, I get half a match point because one other person in the room has done the same thing. Uh, I hate hands like this. I don't know how to get to three note Trump. Some people just overpay and uh, find a way to get there. But uh, uh, I think uh, most are going to be in a diamond partial. Um, <clears throat> I, I like three clubs, the preemptive th choice to bid three clubs preemptively uh, with the six bagger, despite the side ace. Uh, I think that's better than bidding two clubs, which is the value of the hand, so to speak. But uh, even vulnerable, I think with this shape, I think three clubs makes it a lot more difficult on the opponents. As a matter of fact, uh, on this one, after a two-club bid, uh, Waleed's hand over there, he's got rather a good hand. And uh, three clubs would be an overbid, but he might now uh, might decide uh, it's a choice between bidding hearts and diamonds. Uh, the hearts are good, but the diamonds are significantly longer with a two-card disparity between the suits. 
So uh, no matter what, it would take some overbidding one way or another uh, in order to get to a 3 no Trump contract. Uh, I'm not a big fan, I can, of the one club opener, especially in second seat vulnerable. Playing weak no Trumps, you know, we're at 12 to 14, and that's virtually an automatic opener. But in a standard system with only one and a half uh, slow defensive tricks, um, you know, and lousy spot, second seat vulnerable, I, my choice would be to uh, pass. Uh, Kaplan and Rubin, thank you, Babs, 10, ten points. Uh, it's, it's basically a garbage so, uh, and can get into a lot of trouble. Here, it probably worked. Had you passed, it would have gone a one-club opener by Ellen's hand, and uh, that would get a pass from D. And now Waleed, with his hand, he has to value it. Either it's in the 5 to 9 range, in which case you buy past the diamonds and one heart, or he's considered it limit raise values, in which case you bid the diamond suit and plan on reversing into hearts as a responder on your rebid. Uh, with uh, its eight high card points, but in point value, you don't like this the single and when partners open, but finding a fit in another suit makes this hand go up in value to ten and a half. Uh, which puts it just into that limit raise value. So again, it would be an FTF, all of that feeling. Is this hand good enough to bid a diamond and, revert and make another construct a bid, or should I bypass it a la Walsh style and bid one heart? Uh, different players would choose different things, and I'm, I'm not faulting one way or the other. It's on the cusp of that kind of evaluation. Had you bid a diamond or art, one no trump is the automatic rebid from Ellen's hand, uh, and uh, and now the uh, responding hand has got a choice of uh, has got a choice of things to do. Uh, those not playing conventional things over one no trump uh, would either pass or bid two diamonds to play. Uh, playing nothing conventional, I I would rebid two diamonds. Some people might over one no trump decide to invite and bid three diamonds natural. I don't agree with that. Um, I don't see any way really to get to a no Trump game with overbidding. Now, uh, sorry, uh, yes, Ken, if it goes past, uh, yes, of course, Ellen would open one no Trump. What am I thinking? Not one club. Unless playing weak no Trumps. I was thinking weak no Trump with your hand, and I've always played weak no Trumps. It's my preferred, uh, preferred approach. I was weaned on KS, Kaplan Scheinwald, and my brain here just automatically went playing weak no trumps for a one club opener with Ellen. Clearly a standard, that's a one no trump opener. In which case with uh, Waleed's hand over one no trump, uh, you have to consider, do I pass this or do I bid stamen? And if partner bids diamonds or spades, do I then invite a game? So uh, again, it's a choice of, uh, of what you're going to do. Probably you're going to bid stamen. And uh, when partner doesn't bid hearts, if partner does, you can really bid a game. And if partner bids spades, you have to decide whether to force the game with three diamonds or whether to bid two no trump uh, invitational. So um, uh, again, that's FTF. I don't know what to do. I, I think I, I might I might bid uh, three diamonds in that case after bidding stamen. And now we might get to three no trump. And uh, they lead a club, and you win, and you take the diamond hook, and wow, they're king and one in the lock. Thank you very much. Uh, playing in three diamonds while lead, after winning the opening lead, I have no idea why you played a diamond to the ace. Uh, you've got an opening bid on your left. Uh, they rate to have the king of diamonds. Just uh, take, the normal, uh, take the normal hook. Okay. Uh, well, five diamonds might work here, yeah, because the ace of hearts is on side. But uh, uh, not a place I'd like to be playing in. Okay. All right. I think we've uh, pretty well had the biscuit for today. We're a few minutes over. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, okay, thanks for the info, Babs. And uh, also, Babs, of course, thank you for your help, which is invaluable as usual. And thanks, everybody, for showing up. And uh, for those who are freebies, I guess I'll see you next month about this time. 
and hopefully some of you will decide to uh, uh, stick your nose in and get some regular instruction from me on uh, on what I feel is the best approach of a two over one system and the tools to use while still thinking, uh, keeping it relatively simple without too much science standing type of things, yet still have the tools to be able to handle virtually every hand type you might encounter. Uh, so check out the information on that link that Babs has uh, given you, and hopefully we'll see more of you in the future. Thanks again, Babs, and thank you, everybody. Uh, bye for now.